did well as well as speaker after the other. It's nice to have a bit of a breather. Um, but uh, I'm very uh, pleased to welcome again back to Salford Helen Campbell, who's here from Brussels, or possibly from Salamanca. I don't know which part of Europe you've come from uh, to be here today. Uh, Helen's here representing the European Commission and in particular the uh, interpreting. Uh, within the Commission. So we've had so far today a number of speakers concentrating particularly on the translation industry with some insight into the interpreting uh, industry as well, but uh, Helen's day-to-day -day work is interpreting and interpreting only. So I'll hand the floor to you and thank you. Thank you. Yes, I have just come from Brussels, so I apologise for being a bit late, but I had to get up the crack of dawn, and as you know, trains are not always 100% reliable. Yes, indeed, I represent um, interpreting, but I can also tell you something about translation in the European institutions. Briefly, to tell you who I am, Helen Campbell, I read languages at Southampton University, I then went to Germany, I was reading German and French, and in Germany I decided that it would be a good thing to go and live there for a while. I'm not going to say when, because it's clearly a very, very long time ago. <laughs> And I finished up, after I got my degree in German and French, being a disc jockey for a short while. And that's the best training I've ever had or ever could possibly conceive of as a training for conference interpreting. How to use a microphone, how to judge, how to gauge how people are reacting, all sorts of reasons. Anyway, my parents think, thought it wasn't a proper job. Would I please do something useful with this expensive education? So I became a translator in Germany, German and French, and that was when Brussels institutions were looking out for people to train as conference interpreters. We no longer train conference interpreters, but we did then. Uh, and I came along and was aptitude tested, passed the tests, thought I might stay a few years, and I hate to say I'm still there. That, in a very, very brief nutshell, is me. Now, you want to know about you and whether you would be interested in becoming either a translator or an interpreter, for which you still have to train, of course. Uh, I'll say if this is my outfit. It's, a, it's the largest interpreting service in the world, and we are European <coughs> Commission staff, with freelancers employed as well, running around 60 meetings every single day. That is very vast, I can tell you. It's 700 interpreters are needed every single day. Now here's the good news, we are short, desperately short. The United Nations and the European institutions are crying out for recruits to interpret. We are terribly short of English mother tongue. That's our biggest shortage. So whereas everybody else will be telling you things are being cut down, this is a rotten economic climate, no it's not for us actually. We really, really need people. But you have to be good you have to have, in addition to your English or whatever it is, mother tongue, two languages, minimum. And you have to know them very well. You've got time for that. I'm looking around, you've got lots of time, but just think about it. There is a big market there, and you can earn quite a lot of money doing this job, and you don't need any experience. I mean, is that not good? I hope this is encouraging. Good. So, just a quick line, I don't suppose I need to explain this, I suppose that I'm talking to people who know the difference, but the big thing is in Brussels and in the United Nations, um, in any big international organization, in interpreting and translation are completely separate. <coughs> separate directorates, general departments, and they are totally different jobs. The, eye, the sort of profile of the translator may be one thing, and the profile of the interpreter is usually very different. Interpreters by and larger actors who interpret a role. Uh, I know tons of people who do both, but they put on a different hat in each case. So don't mix them up. One is verbal, that's us, the interpreter, you can tell I'm the interpreter. And the other is the translator is only in using the written word. And I've said on the private market, people do both because they have to, most of the time anyway. What do you need now? How long have I got? Ten minutes? Well, I'm going to have to rush, so I'll go quickly through and just tell you what you need, because these are the important things. A university degree in any subject, whatever. Not necessarily in languages. My um, Director General, Marco Benedetti, is a chemist who happened also to know languages very well, but his degree has nothing to do with languages. 
you need to train uh, nowadays also for translation. So you would need to do probably a postgrad degree, uh, diploma, whatever, but it, it has to be a valid qualification from a valid university course. Uh, we have on our website, address will come at the end, all the universities with which we cooperate. So if you go to study interpreting or translation, go to the right place. This would be one of the right places, especially translation, right? So the soul for this is very strong on, on translation. You need to comply with current language requirements because they change all the time. We are very short, particularly of how many people have German as a passive language. Right, I'm recruiting you within the next 10 minutes. And another one as well. Ah, this is a little more difficult, but that can be added later. German is in the most dire short supply, and we need it very much. So I hope, again, you're, you're feeling confident. Uh, you need to speak your mother tongue well. It's a thing we're having also great problems in. We have a lot of people who will apply, but they do not master a proper register of... I say English, we're, we're, we have 23 languages in the EU. They're all, it, the problem exists for all of them, but English is particularly acute. People need to be able to understand you, and you have to be able to speak in a ministerial meeting in the correct register. So your English language, or your German language, very important. Now I'm going to be very kind to my translation colleagues and mention them too. Uh, these are the conditions, these are the, the rules. So, all those things, university degree also in any subject, no professional experience required and no age limit. And unlike the interpreting directorate general that I represent, in the translation directorate general, they offer traineeships. So you are well advised to have a look at that as well, because it's, it's an extremely good traineeship. Not very many, but some. If you apply to, to work for us, you can be either a freelance or you can be a staff member. To be a staff member means you have gone through, you've jumped over about 15 hurdles of the open competition. And I've had a lot of criticism uh, voiced about it being long and complicated. It will get better. But that is where you will apply. Most people will join a language service like mine as a freelance. And then when a competition is published, and when they've gained a little experience, because it helps after all, uh, then they would set the open competition. So it says there the, 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 the whole procedure takes eight to ten months. That is optimistic at the moment. It takes longer than that, but it is being um, it's under review and it's going to be improved. And they do sort of maths tests and stuff as well, which they're going to change because a lot of linguists fall down on maths. Yeah. I would certainly fall down on maths if it was me. Uh, the idea is now to try and show what you know and to give you a chance to go and prove whether you can or you can't translate or interpret. <coughs> and whether you can add two and two is probably less important. So those are the two routes to join us. That is um, if you want to become a translator. Basically, if you're alone, you, 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 when you start, you should join a good agency. You find out for yourself what is a good agency. Which agencies work for the European institutions which have a good reputation? You will need to do that to get work. When you've been with an agency for a certain time, and if you want to set up a loan as a translator, you can. But I'm being realistic now. You won't get much work if you start out just by being whoever, Ellen Campbell, and here I am, can I work for